To the people who lived before the fall, our world would have seemed bizarre, but it is all we have known. In the new world, many of us came to accept more than we should have, especially in Texan. We accepted the lie that life couldn't be better, that we would always suffer at the hands of those in power, that we would live off the scraps they allowed us. My father and his friends refused to accept anything but a better life for everyone in the settlement they called home. They seem to have become Bastion's protectors by an accident of fate, but I think they would have fought for anyone who needed them. Father had difficulty talking about what happened that day, the losses they suffered. He would just say, it was a good day, but a hard day, and changed the subject. I had to get the story from those of his friends who were there and had survived. Children. I have been telling you these tales because I want you to know that you don't have to accept the things you find unacceptable. You can fight, you can change things. I hope that you see by what they accomplished that you can decide what your story will be. This then is the account of the battle for Dallas as pieced together from the recollections of the survivors. Good evening, Wasters. Uh, welcome to the Battle for Dallas. Uh, title of the episode is Project Morningstar. Some of you know what the hell that means. Many of you don't. It will become more apparent as we move forward. Let's go ahead and begin with Eric and Goldwater. When the sky fire hit Dallas, it was a shock, but it didn't change your plans. Dallas was hit hard and much of it was demolished, but the heart of the cathedral area from which the angels coordinated their work still stood. No one knew how the weapons had been directed against them or why. So it was decided to take advantage of the situation and press the attack. Tank and Grendel are leading most of the TDF and a direct assault against the cathedral's remaining defenses. Curse and his forces are conducting guerrilla strikes throughout the city meant to confuse and draw defensive forces away from the areas they need to stay as clear as possible. More important than any of these battles is Project Morningstar, the sister clones created by combining angel and human DNA. D and four other living weapons are waiting to slip into the main building and attempt to kill as many angels as they can. We begin with the two of you in position on a nearby rooftop from which Eric can provide covering fire to the infiltration team if needed. Goldwater is there to cover Eric. You have a laser-based transceiver that allows point-to-point -to -point communication with D as long as she's within line of sight. So looking down, uh, Eric, you can uh, look through your sight. You see D kind of wave up at you. Uh, she has another of those transceivers. And as long as uh, basically the way they explained it is the signal is communicated through fluctuations in the laser. So as long as the laser, which is not actually visible because of the wavelength that's on. So as long as you have line of sight, you get pretty good voice transmission. And they tell you that they're, they're waiting, uh, they're in position to break in, but there's too many defenders in the area. The ironic thing about all of this is the, the heart of the cathedral, the term cathedral has been used to mean any city, which they call cathedral cities, where the angels we're using the believers to load their rockets full of plastic and set it up to the, the ships in the sky. The actual heart of the cathedral, in this case in Dallas, is a cathedral. It is a church. So from time to time, you look down through Karen's scope and you see the, the church and a little bit across the street waiting for the opportunity are, uh, I actually misspoke in the opening. It's, uh, I think there's six of them total. Uh, and they're all variations on a theme because they are clone sisters and they're all a little different. Um, for example, Jay currently refers to themselves as a brother. Um, the two of you are waiting. And at this point, you're starting to hear explosions in the distance and you hear gunfighter, gunfire, which would be the battle being joined in the city below. The two of you have a few moments alone while you, from time to time, you check in with D. You listen to the gunfire getting closer to reflect on what you've gone through and what's brought you here. 
loud out there. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Doesn't it always? Yeah. Man, it's been it's been crazy. I can't remember a time when anything wasn't just insane. Well, it's all a struggle, isn't it? Yeah. It's worth it, though. It has to be. I can't I mean, conceive of all we've done, all I've done without it meaning something, without it accomplishing something. I mean, when you think about it, we've accomplished a lot already, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you remember when we met that dog? That was like, that seemed like it was such a big deal back then. Man, you remember when the wizard kid was afraid of chocolate? I do. Whew. That was a long time ago. I remember when you were uh, angry. Man, All the time. If nothing else happens, I feel like I already won because I don't feel like that anymore, you know? dogs in the city yeah wild dogs they're being aggravated by the explosions it's like i used to read stories about how dogs used to hate fireworks same kind of thing yeah but man i i feel like a i feel like a clear tube now you know like uh well like the barrel of, of my gun you know, like when it's dirty, it don't fire well. When it's clean and it's clear, it's just a, it's like breathing. I don't feel like that. I'm sorry. The mission does not end for me. Is that you understand? I do. I'm that guy. But let me tell you something. You got to figure out a way to take a breath every now and again, man. <laughs> For what purpose? Does, what, what does rest achieve other than your wounds healing or to refresh yourself for the next? battle or whatever sacrifice needs to be made. Can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. Man, it's a marathon, right? Mm -hmm. But when you finish the marathon, there's nobody at the end to tell you, good job. You ran a marathon. There's only people along the way to hand you a cup of water so that you can have something to drink and the marathon doesn't feel quite so long. When you get to the end, man, kind of person you are, kind of person I used to be. You just look for the next course and you keep running. I'll know when I'm done with the marathon and I'll congratulate myself before going to the next one. Well, I'll be waiting there with a cup of water when you get to the finish, man. I appreciate that, Eric. I know you're not a, I know you're not a showing a feelings kind of guy, but uh, can I offer you my hand? Of course. And Eric um, puts his hand out for a handshake. And then uh, when Goldwater goes for it, he goes all the, the to the the you know the mid forearm handshake, the real good <laughs> one, you know, the Clinton the style one. handshake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and pulls him in and gives him a hug. I'll take it. I think at this point I'm going to need a notice check uh, against a five from uh, Goldwater, please. Uh, 
I got one score, so that's a partial, correct? Yeah, something. You look over Eric's shoulder, and there's something strange about a building kind of between you and the cathedral, uh, a little off to the side. So it's, it's um, you're higher than it is. Mm -hmm. And it just, so do you scrutinize it a little more closely? Yeah. Go ahead and roll again against a four this time. So Eric, he pulls back and he's like looking over uh, one of the buildings. Okay, well, I turn around to look at what he's looking at and sco scope it with the scope. So what'd you get in the second roll? I got two. Um, there is something strange about the upper few floors. And you see Eric looking with his scope. Do you let him know that? Yeah. Up there, the top few floors, I don't know what's happening. I'm going to uh, crouch down just in case. So I so trained my scope on the upper few floors to see. With the scope, go ahead and give me a notice against a three. You got a one. So you got no successes at all? No. Uh, you don't know what he's talking about. Looks looks fine to you. Uh, are you sure, man? I mean, looks pretty good to me. Some Something is strange there. I can't quite make out what's happening, but it's specifically those top few. May I borrow, Karen? Sure. Okay, so go ahead and you roll against a three. All right, I got three that time. Okay, exceptional. Um, you take a look, and it takes a minute for it to sink in. The upper floor looks like it's a facade. Like, those don't look like real windows. And it also looks like it has been replaced post-construction. I can see why you couldn't tell. It looks like the rest of the building, but that's... Somebody put something in front of the building. Something's under there, behind there. Can't make out. I can't see past it, but it's a false front. Is that the direction that the girls are headed? Uh, no, but it's between you and the cathedral. It's in the area. Uh, and it's an unremarkable building. Like there are other buildings uh, that were repurposed to be the, uh, the scaffolding for the rockets that they've been loading. This isn't that. This is some fucking office building. I'll hand you the, your rifle back. You can yeah. see it now that he points out exactly what it is. You can see it now. Oh man, we should tell it. We should let everybody know. So it looks like it's hiding something. If the top few floors are a facade, whatever it's hiding is big and important. Looks like it's hiding something big and important. So the only people you can reach uh, would be uh, D and her squad, but they're in position waiting to be signaled to go into the main cathedral building to start murdering angels and shutting down the operations. There really isn't anybody else. Um, hey, D. Do you yeah. So put everybody up, Colt. Yeah, over. Hey, um, just go water and I were checking out this building that looks like it's hiding something. It's not that big a deal for, for you for now. I just want to make sure you guys are aware. About six blocks west. Of the building, the building is hiding something. It's like somebody, um, I don't know, reconstructed the top few floors to make it look like a building, but there's something being hidden under there that looks like it's probably pretty big and pretty important. Oh, a facade. Yeah, I'll tell the girls. Uh, L is the team leader. Uh, and it's between them and us, huh? Mm -hmm. I see if they can check it out. I mean, if it's a weapon, if it's you know, if it's a, a, a skimmer pad or something, it could cause us real trouble when we need to break in. And we can't really move from here. Yeah. Okay. Eric! 
<laughs> go, go for Eric. Oh, uh, do you copy? Yeah. Sorry, it's I... my favorite part of the walkie-talkie situation. All right, start again. <laughs> okay. Eric, do you copy? I do. I copy. Yes. Okay. Uh, the girl said that um, if you can, y'all should really check it out for us because if it's some kind of, I don't know, Elle said something about a land surfer, some fancy words I don't know, but something could be a really big problem if it's in there, so you should look at it. Roger that. Over and out. Yes. Um, we should probably check it out, man. I suppose I'm worried about not having you on Overwatch, though. Well, I'd feel a lot worse if whatever that was went off and did some damage to those young ladies. I agree. I'm just wondering if maybe I should go and you stay up here. Can I cover him that whole way? Um, it depends. Uh, if he has to go inside, you won't see him. Is there any way for us to, does he have a, one of these transponders as well? Oh, they only had the set. As you might imagine, the pieces for something like that are hard to come by. All right, look, I'm going to keep you covered with my scope. If I see something, I will take it out. When you get there, if everything looks clear and you need to go in, I want you to give me a signal and I will join you. Sounds good. We're going to cut the scene uh, over to another part, down on the floor, uh, not down on the floor, down on ground level, across the street from the cathedral. Uh, there are um, six, in many ways, identical uh, young people, all grouped together, all crouched down and hidden. The sisters have moved carefully and quietly into position, had been waiting for the attacks to move enough of the defensive forces away from the main building for them to make their move. For several hours, he waited patiently. So uh, at this point, let's introduce who we've got here. We have D. D we know. Uh, K, uh, we have met before, but currently K is being uh, played by Jen. So K is uh, uh, wearing uh, tight tactical, basically almost like cosplaying an assassin, right? Like a lot of weapons held close to the body, definitely uh, an outfit that would allow one to jump through like a laser defense grid kind of a kind of an outfit. Um, the leader of the, the team leader is L, uh, and who was playing? Oh, I'm that's right, I'm playing L. Uh, L is still wearing uh, the, the kind of like scrubs that they all wore when they were originally at the, the Institute. Um, she has kept them on, has a jacket over them. Um, she is a long ponytail, uh, just a pistol at her side. She is a tactical expert and has been chosen to be the team leader. We also have Jay. Uh, Jay is being played by Barrett. Uh, Jay is the heavy weapons specialist who is equipped with a minigun. Uh, Jay uh, is also a they, not a she. There are definite differences between uh, the, the, the term sister is certainly a not entirely accurate um, expediency. Um, Effie is being played by uh, Mr. Delonzo. Uh, Effie is a Technician, infiltrator. Um, I'm picturing a little like influenced by like Kaylee, uh, sort of a, a bright spark, uh, a lot of gear, you know. Uh, and then Shannon is playing M. Uh, M is a demolitions expert. It's it's a little uh, tropey, but uh, M has become twitchy, and uh, is is certainly the kind of person that when you if you had to guess what the job was. You, you probably might, you would guess the motions expert. Uh, I, I think we'd go so far as to like a lot of the hair being blown off, that, that kind of thing. Uh, also laden down almost as much as Effie because um, M has a bunch of explosives on her back. I love this. <laughs> so 
D, you, this is the closest you have, certainly biologically speaking, because I think the group at Bastion would be family in another sense. But this, in a Thanksgiving sense, is as close as you've ever come to family. And it is a diverse group, to be sure. Um, I am going to uh, give you just a couple of minutes uh, to talk about um, your roles within the group. Uh, and uh, basically, the one question this whole group has had is, they don't know D very well. So they're not entirely sure what her role will be. So why don't we sort that out? Um, the leader is going to do the job of the leader and sit back and let the group uh, have their say. And uh, scene. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am really excited about this. <laughs> you, this is so cool. We all look so different. I really thought that we were all twins. Well, I mean, there's fraternal twins and there's identical twins. We could all be twins. Did you know that there's a, a whole bunch of different kinds of twins, like die die twins and all these other kinds of twins? What? I bet we're like a wild kind of twin. What? Yeah, there's like a million different subsets of twins. Die die twins? What's a die die twin? Like where you have your own uh amniotic fluid sac is separate from like you're not sharing anything. So like everybody is individual. Okay. Well now I know I know what uh D's contribution to the team is is uh facts. She can spell facts at us. That's going to be awesome when we're going to fight. She can tell us uh, what types of weapons they have and where they came from in martial history. Why yeah, do you, probably. Why don't you calm down for just a second? What? Well, we were trying to figure out who does what. I figured it out. D is the fact one. That's yeah, facts are cool, man. Yeah. Are very, you being cool. sarcastic right now? Because that doesn't seem very helpful in battle. Yeah. No. Knowing everything there is to know is the most important thing to know, I guess. Yeah, are you kidding me? I could absolutely watch who's coming in and let you know what kind of infiltration tactics that they're using. And I can let you know where they originated from and who failed to use them properly. See, I like her. Look, I'm not saying I don't like her. I'm just saying I don't see the battle value in the middle of a firefight for someone to say, hey, did you know that uh, that gun is uh, was originally created in the late 1800s and was adapted by the U.S. military in the 1930s and is still used today? That's not helpful. Is that something you know? Me? Yeah. Which gun is that? It's the M M A. It's the M 1911A pistol. It's an you automatic. Sound like you're jealous? No, I know it. Why would I be jealous? I know that You're one. You're getting louder and your voice is going higher. This as is my get... favorite part. All right, you so know what? That's, that's how I know you're you're getting excited. Okay, <laughs> great fact. You know, I'll just shut up and let you guys figure out what use. Oh, you... come on. <sighs> you know, you Wait, got... okay. Wait, well, what is... Uh, uh, what... Uh -huh. Effie, what do you do again? I'm, what, what do I do? <laughs> She's literally wearing a headset and it's- Look at me. Like oh, right, right. <laughs> I look Sorry. like Ready Player Eight. Sorry. Sorry. Ah, uh, God. Has anyone even considered asking D what she thinks she might be the most helpful out in battle? Oh, smiles. Hey, you just did it. I'll ask though, Kink, uh, D, what do you want to do in a battle? Well, I mean, listen, I, I guess the word for it is stubborn, but I'm really attached to this whole facts idea now, but I happen to be a wildly uh, well-trained uh, physical assassin. So that's something. That is something. Uh, yes, that, that should have, well, you should have led with that, uh, A. 
Um, and the conversation would have been done with a lot faster. I mean, to be fair, not everybody walks into a family reunion and says, I'm a wildly well-trained assassin. The first thing I tell people is that I have a big gun and I like to shoot it. I know. I would argue that considering the situation we're in, it should have been the first thing that was mentioned, especially since we are going into battle. Elsa. We're all so related! Elsa, uh, she did say something about uh, and, uh, noticing things. Uh, that coupled with the unarmed combat, would you say recon, D? Yeah, well, that's, that's the more resisting toward for it. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I doubt you're going to be able to do better than Kay at just the upfront and personal murder. Uh, I mean, murder is probably not the right term for it. Uh, no, we've seen no it. murders. Murders appropriate. You okay with the term? Water. Yeah, murder's fine. I don't know that we should compare notes, but that's fine. Make your own assumptions. <laughs> uh, well, I ripped see. someone apart like a zipper once. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Ooh. It was really fun. I blew up a building like a zipper. What? <laughs> like it like you ripped a person in a zipper. I did a zipper on a building. I electrocuted someone using their own zipper once. That was a good one. Zipper I, cleanse! That. I tore somebody in half by using their tongue as a zipper to split them right up the middle. I've shot people right in the zipper. I've I've never what? I've never done any kills that had anything to do with zippers. I feel like I'm letting you all down. Oh no! But well, look, to be fair, I wasn't aiming for their zipper. I just throw a lot of lead around. <laughs> Listen, today is a new day. Okay, yeah. we have a new goal now. L, uh, you gotta get a, a zipper a zipper shot. Yeah, 100%. I just want to get us there and end as many of these bastards as we can. Okay, but you got to get one in the zip. I think between us, we've scored five dead angels. I want to at least double that today. Hell yeah. No problem. So at this point... Um, wait, wait, time. Wait, is, L, is that double from five? So we get another five or we do 10? so that we'd have a total of three times the amount of our previous number. I, I Is this I, an increase of 100%? It would be a 200% improvement. 200%. <laughs> when you say double our total, I don't know what it means. I'm going to kill well, 10. If we can blow the whole building, I bet we can get the 10. Okay, good. Surely there are more than 10 of them in that building. We, we actually don't know. Really? Yeah, we tend to encounter them only one at a time. We know there's more than one. I mean, we've seen them from a distance, uh, sometimes two at a time. What if theoretically there's a couple of dozen in there, but we don't know. What if what if they don't like each other like we like each other and they can't be around each other? And if they are brought in the same room like a like a viper, they have to fight each other. Yeah, like a rat king. So maybe they're killing each other even now. Or like a a normal I mean, family. Less, to be stated a little less alarmist, but still possible. I mean, our warlords are like that. You know, they have to stay apart or they fight. Oh, yeah. What do you call a group of angels anyway? A, a, a congregation! Yeah. A zipper! Uh, <laughs> a zipper of angels. Uh, it's a subjugation. <laughs> I was literally looking it up right now. But you knew stuff. So the conversation. I wanted to know the real thing. Conversation continues for a little bit. Uh, I think it's uh, order or choir. Um, you wait for several hours patiently until the gunfire gets closer. Finally, the guards in the area move away. At this point, the team advances. You you do a low crouch action movie, crossing to the back of the cathedral, and uh, M. Uh, not M, I'm sorry. Uh, Effie, I'm going to yeah. need a hacking test. So oh. that's going to be five dice against a four, please. Yes, indeedy. Here we go. Hack, 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 hack. Oh, yes, I'm very successful. Uh, okay, so that's important because that was not a normal lock. 
And it certainly was not the lock that came with the cathedral because that cathedral is about 200 years old and is definitely Terran architecture. It's a, it's a big Catholic church. Uh, that lock, you figured it out, but you're pretty sure the angels put that in there. Hey guys, something to know. Get ready for some facts. Yeah! This lock seems pretty new, just so you know. Like, doesn't seem like it goes with this building at all. No, you can tell by the way that uh, the seal around it is uh, a lot lighter than all the other seal in this area that it was installed within the last couple of years, at least. See? I love that about her. So I assume the minigun is out. Various people have various okay. weapons out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think this is yours to handle. So you, you got it open. You can open it anytime you want, Effie. That's you, Mike. Me? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, so we just kind of pop in? Or form. Okay. Uh, there is a hiss when you do that. Um, uh, <laughs> pop back out. A little bit of a, a seal on it, almost like a um, shit like the ones we, we uh, have in Texas, so rain shit doesn't get in, like almost like the rubber seal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it pops. Because the the air condition the inside is a different temperature, so there's kind of a pull and a pop. Uh, on the other side, it's clear the inside of the cathedral has been replaced with alien architecture. It's made of some sort of foam material that looks like pearlescent plastic, but seems to be hard as steel. It is luminous and has a pale glow. There is a passage which leads to what looks like maybe an airlock door. Do we recognize this? No, no. This is like opening a door to a church and there's a space station inside. Like that's the difference in the architecture. Okay. It's bizarre. Um, guys, mm -hmm. come and look at this. Wild. Whoa. Uh, this is unexpected. Lights because it glows itself and it's it's not super bright, but it, it glows it's all glowing, so the place is perfectly lit. Um, does it seem to be uh, driven by some sort of like LED, LCD technology or anything like that? Or You think, uh, and you do have a good science. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and make a science roll. You have four dice. Do it against a four in this case. Uh, yeah, I got two. You pretty sure it's... Uh, a um, property of the material itself. So it's probably something run into it, almost like we attach, you know, electricity to run it through neon to raise it up to plasma state and make it light up. There's something that's making this material, which is not actually metal, makes it glow. So it's not, you, you think it's the material itself glowing, but there's probably some kind of a governor regulator uh, that if that was unplugged, it would just go dull mm. very odd so this um i think this is powered from somewhere you guys should i slap it <laughs> i mean you can okay i'm gonna slap it uh, sure. mike i use as much power as i possibly can and i'm gonna slap a shit out of this thing so you need to make a strength test against a five okay Double sixes. So re-roll the sixes. That's two two of them. <laughs> oh, and another six and a four. So three scores and re-roll the six, the new six. One. So that's still an exceptional success, which is literally what it takes to affect this stuff. So you hit Great. as hard as you can. Uh, you're going to take one wound, uh, and there's a resound resounding like. You know what it sounds like? And I, I know Mike does. Uh, yes. When you slap a, a kid's slide yep. in the amusement park, like there's this very like like a dong kind of a noise. It makes okay. that noise. And it dents a little bit like a, like a parking lot thing. 
all you hear now is just a loose string of profanities as I <laughs> hold my hand in anger. Wow. Uh, that was a bad idea. Don't slap it. Don't yeah, slap yeah. it. <laughs> uh, Elle says, I, I hate to be this person. But Do it, not say I told you so or I will slap you. I was going to say this is a stealth mission. Okay, I will be quieter. I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> so should we follow the little path? So, and, and she points uh, to the other door. What do you think that is? D, what do you got? So, Sorry, uh, what do you point to? So D could make a, uh, do you have Psy under tech? Oh, um, I don't think so. Okay, you have no idea. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Ba, ba, ba. Effie can make a four die roll against a four. Yep. Three successes. That's an error. Oh, and one of them is a six. You yeah, the, yeah, as long oh. as you've got exceptional, that's really, there won't be much more than that. Okay. That's an airlock. And honestly, you know, again, science based, um, the angels can obviously breathe in our atmosphere reasonably well but it stands to reason that where they live, they might have different atmospheric requirements, at least a little bit to be comfortable. So an airlock, now that you're seeing that it's there, it's like that completely makes sense to you. So you guys, that thing keeps the angels breathing regulated. Well, so they can, breathe, they can breathe on our planet, but that thing, makes sure that they get the the oxygen or whatever chemical compound that they breathe that they need. Mm. Well, theoretically, and I'm not saying this is my favorite option because I really would appreciate getting in there and showing these bastards exactly what they deserve. However, if what you're saying is correct, theoretically, we could just blow this airlock and murder all of them simultaneously i mean that's not a bad call at I least like, weaken them a lot so let me clarify uh we were talking about comfort you've seen them among humans for long enough periods that doesn't seem to be poison our atmosphere doesn't seem to be poisonous to them they're probably just uncomfortable so all you'd be doing is making them uncomfortable ah or mad <laughs> yes, you could piss them <laughs> off, but I'm pretty sure Kay would be frustrated if all you did was just annoy them. Yeah. <laughs> if that's all, if all it was was annoyance, then that's yeah. not Kay worth it. Like, I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah. Kind of funny, though. It'd be funny. <laughs> it would be funny. You're right. Yeah, it would be funny. Be would it really fall under the stealth? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> but it would be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's probably not worth it, but I'm imagining it and I'm laughing in the future if we did it, but we're not going to do that. Are we, uh, is it, is it blowing pure oxygen? Uh, you don't know because you're not on the other side of it. Like it's an airlock, so it would have a little chamber beyond that door and then another airlock door. You would have to equalize and go through the second door to be whatever the internal atmosphere would be like. So it'd be like our normal airlocks. Right. So you won't know on this side. This side is still air conditioned outside air. You know, no. what would be funny hmm. is if it was blowing pure oxygen in there and we could light it on fire and turn this building into a bomb and just destroy them that way. <laughs> I can't that, that easy. You uh, zip them right out of here. That'd be great. <laughs> Why don't we try it? We could blow it up. Worst case scenario, there's a little shrapnel and some angel crosshair fire damage. No, they'll know, we're, they'll know we're here and then they'll come down and like smash our heads in. I'd rather try and get a few of them uh, stealthily, it, even though I really want to shoot this gun, obviously. I think, I think you think you can open the airlock? Can you get us in? I, I, let me take a look. Okay. 
So I'm going to take a look. Uh, okay, so you need to make hack again, and this one's against a four. How many dice? Uh, oh, that's going to be five. Thank you. Oh, yes. Very successful. Actually, I've got two sixes. Should I reroll them? Uh, yes. It's good to know if you have exceptional. And six. I got another six. So you've got Yay! And I got another six. Yeah! <laughs> okay. Based on what you learned from that first lock, it's easy to apply that to this. Uh, you don't open it, but you have the knowledge like, yeah, I know how to get this open. Yeah, I know how to get this open. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So the two choices it seems like we have are one, proceed as we'd planned, go through the airlock, and then just stealth through the complex, murdering angels, maybe find a way to blow the whole place, or see an airlock, drop our shit and just blow it up here and hope it does something. I mean, I think I know those two options sound weighted. I have to admit, I have an opinion. I don't think just blowing the airlock is going to do it. No. Dang. I, I think there'll be time. Don't worry. I think and we're going to need you. Uh, yeah. Explosives are going to be used. But I, I think we got to find something that's a little more fragile than an airlock door, right? That's probably a lot of things are more fragile than a door. My hand. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably right. So, um, Jay, uh, your hand. cover the door, please. And uh, Effie, go ahead and get that thing open and let's pass through the airlock. Yep. Then at the very least, we can find out what, I mean, if the inner airlock opens and we taste strong oxygen, we know maybe that's an option, but we'll know. The other thing to bear in mind, by the way, I'm not a scientist, but I, I think I stayed with Grace longer than any of you. And I remember we had a conversation about this very thing. And because our systems are half angelic, there may be something in the air that a normal squad might find deleterious, like it might cause them trouble. I don't think it'll affect us. So one of the reasons for Project Morningstar, one of the reasons to send us is we can probably handle whatever is on the other side, atmospherically speaking. That's good. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Okay, Effie, do it. Do I have to roll? Nah, you already made it. Okay. So you, just, you figured out what to do. You do it. It swings aside. It's one of those uh, uh, 70s sci-fi doors. It goes, and uh, oh there's a small chamber, exactly like a, an airlock on a, a sub or something or on the space station. You can get into it. Then the, the inner airlock will not door will not open unless the outer one is closed. Uh, you could bypass that, but why you'd want to doesn't. It, you want the airlock to work to be into the inner atmosphere. So you close the door, and again, anytime you want, you can open the door. And L will give you a three, two, one, and have J ready with the mini gun. And then psh, the inner door opens. There's a rush of air that comes in. And immediately there's a, a taste. The air here is different. Uh, and it's also cooler in here, uh, enough that to a human, it would be uh, very cold. Uh, to, to you all, you're not as sensitive to it. So it's just, you know, well, this is cool. Um, it doesn't feel like oxygen. You think there's something in the air. None of you has the right gear to figure out what it is, but there's something that must be native to them that's been added to the air. Um, and so it stings a little, but it's not going to hurt you. So L, L, L and then by extension, Grace appear to have been right. So you take a few breaths and it's like, well, that's not great, but you're, you're going to be fine. So you enter, uh, there's nobody here so far. Once you're on the other side and you begin to uh, move, you start to feel a low vibration that you're feeling uh, on the through the floor and the walls. And uh, uh, you would guess, because you're already making uh, guesses along these lines, there probably is some kind of generator or something. And that feels like it's an echo of that. So you, you feel that? Like echo of a, yeah, I was going to ask if y'all felt that. It feels like the echo of a generator or something. 
I am. You think you could blow a generator? I sure as hell can slap a generator. Yeah, you're gonna really fuck up that hand, D. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I could I could blow up a generator. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's try to find the generator. Okay. Uh, Effie, go ahead. I mean, you understand the tech, I think, better than any of us. Uh, let's keep um, K towards the front. Uh, keep low and hit as much as you can. If we run into an angel, um, let's mow that fucker down. Zipper shots. Easy. <laughs> Zipper shots. Jesus. All right. Fine. Uh, let's try to find that generator and kill everything we can along the way. That sounds like so a great idea. Camera pulls back and we see the sisters uh, progressing uh, through the quarters of the alien structure. Meanwhile, Navad and Torg. Ah. As soon as the skyfire was misdirected, Navad realized where it had gone. Concerned for the safety of their friends, Navad and Torg, with uh, three of the Knights of Torg, head to Dallas as quickly as possible leaving Chaz and the militia to defend Bastion. Uh, especially now that Chaz can talk and talk to the militia and poses no threat, they're actually super happy to see Chaz because they've always been very glad that Chaz is protecting them, but they were kind of afraid of Chaz. So one, one of the first things Chaz said is, Chaz is smarter now. No, be afraid of Chaz. Chaz is your friend. Chaz has hugs. And... Pretty quickly, Bastion warms right up to Chaz. So he's going to defend Bastion in your absence. Uh, the knights with you are named Aaron, Teeny, and Scott. Uh, Scott has a bad case of Scott. For those of you that don't have the rule book, number one, shame on you if you're watching this stream and you've not got the rule book because it's still on RPG now. Uh, but Scott is a mutation that some humans have that for some reason, a percentage of them all look the same it's like almost like cloning like a percentage of people just end up looking like this person they've nicknamed scott so throughout throughout texan for no apparent reason there are dozens of these scott looking motherfuckers and one of the knights of torg is a scott uh it's a hard ride but the knights are skilled and it's going well um two hours in Torg notices that Navad's hair has gray streaks in it and he seems to be slumped in his seat. So you're in um, uh, bikes with sidecars and the two of you are riding, the knights are driving and uh, Torg, you notice that that uh, Navad looks drained. Navad, should Torg worry? Navad, look. Uh, so pretend, yell that, and maybe even uh, uh, do. Oh, because we're in the right. You know, hold the right. edge of the motorcycle. <laughs> right. Now, Vod. <laughs> Navad, Navad, here, Torg. I can hear you okay. Torg wondered, Navad, okay. Ah, uh, I'm tired, Torg. The knights are going to stop the vehicles for a moment. Um, you get out. Um, Navad, you feel like too little butter spread across too much toast. Uh, the boost that you used to have to your hits is gone. They go back to base. Um, you don't feel 20. You know, you, you, when you get up, you get like the middle-aged man groan that God help us, we all get. There's that, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a very special kind of like, I don't know if it's a Marine training thing. To be able to stand at 40 plus and not go a little bit is like a very special skill, uh, which Navad no longer has. Uh, you feel, is that a, is, it, anyway. You feel uh, dissipated. Since your connection to Gordon's gift, the protective magic uh, was taxed, and that you reached out to everything that was Bastion, far beyond Bastion itself, to defend it, it took a load out of it. It's been, it was hard to do that. So I'm actually, I need to use the restroom. We're not going to take a bio break, though. Okay. We're going to 
because the two of you could go ahead and have a brief conversation. Oh, about we're going to have our scene while you do your bio break. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought we were, t- I thought we were taking well, a I'm break. Just, break. I'm going to take you to the bathroom. It's hang on. Uh, no, no, I'll be back. You just, you go you, ahead with you, my mute your line, Mike, just in case. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. I, uh, I'm pretty tired, Torg. That blast took a lot out of me. Torg can tell. But Torg's so proud of Navad. And Torg think Navad deserve to be tired. So Torg think it's okay, Navad. Okay. That's good. I think if we win, I may, I don't know how long I'm going to last after this. I mean, in general, uh, I may stop doing magic. I don't know. Or maybe it'll get stronger. I don't know. I've never done this before, Torg. I don't know what happens next. I've never protected a city with my magic before. (sighs) All Torg know is that Navad is Navad with or without magic. Thanks, I appreciate that. Torg no Navad going to thrive no matter, no matter. That's good, I think, I think you will too, Torg. I mean, look, you're a parent you're doing really great. Chaz got so smart. Chaz, Chaz, great. Torque, very proud, Chaz. Yeah. I'm proud of all of us, actually, to be honest. I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, Torque, agree. Look, even if we don't win, oh, this is going to sound terrible. I was going to say, even if we don't win, we still won because oh. we like each other a lot, but that that's dumb. <laughs> that's so dumb. Torg, <sighs> Torg, Torg like to be dumb and silly, but Torg agree, even that too dumb for Torg. Too dumb, I know, I know. Look, uh, when this is all done, I may have to redo the posters in my thing. I don't know. I might like get like uh, paintings of a field or something, you know. You, you're going to be okay, uh, Nevada? We should probably keep going. Um, yeah, we can keep going. You, you sure? I'm that? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. All right, climb back in. I'll try to watch the bumps, but you said speed was important, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a something, you know. It's okay. We got to get there. Okay. I mean, for what it's worth, I'm not sure what it was that you did, but we all know that we're here because you did it. Yeah, I think I made them shoot themselves. I mean, I know I made them shoot themselves, but I don't know how. No, I don't know sorry. if I could do it again. You know, I'm I'm real sorry for the first time we met when I asked why they called you Lord. Oh yeah. <laughs> or you think it works now? I'm willing to call you Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna give it up. Yeah, there's something poetic about that, right? Like at the point where you really deserve it, you're ready to give it up. Yeah. All right. Hang on tight, my lord. We got to go. All right. And the the motorcycle kicks in the gear and off you go. Uh, Meanwhile, meanwhile, Eric and Goldwater. So um, Goldwater, I'm going to need a athletics. No, sorry, a run. uh, Run test against uh, four. I assume you're taking like stares at speed like you're trying to do this quickly right yep 
two. Okay, plenty. So you, this, this is actually, I would imagine we've seen him do this as a workout, like just as a workout. It's like, oh, it's morning. I'm going to go up and down six flights of stairs for, for, you know, to, to make the president's physical fitness challenge. <laughs> so this is like that, but it's a bit longer. Yeah. And uh, you get to the, the ground level. And I think we would see the scene at this point through Eric's scope. He'd be watching anxiously until he sees you emerge from the building. Um, which means I need a notice test from Eric, please. Great. Against? Four. You know what you're looking for. Yep, Andy. I got one. Just one? Yep. Okay, so one is a partial. So one is going to give you, uh, there are people in the area moving the direction of where Goldwater is. So you're going to track them and see if maybe they're a problem? Or you yes. Wanna... Okay. So give me an awareness check. Against the four. Oh yeah, and I got a, I got two, and I got a six. Let me reroll. They this. they feel like trouble to you. Okay. You can't really verify it other than gut instinct at this point because what is the difference between the awareness and the notice? Like there's nothing that you can point to, but they that does not feel like a good thing that they're approaching your friend. What do you do? Can he see me? They do not. You're, you're literally up on a building. But can Goldwater see me? Um, he knows where you are. I think at the very least, you probably have a signal mirror. So if you okay. want to, you could, but basically- uh, I'm gonna try screen. and signal him. Okay, so give me a awareness check from um, Goldwater, please. Against? Um, four, okay, you know I what you look for. I got two. Okay, so that's success, which means Eric's trying to call your attention to something. Now give me a notice against a three. Okay. So you were successfully warned. Okay, I got three on that. And because you're at ground level, you can see the group of six approaching. Uh, they're currently at far range. Okay. And with that role, you see that they are wearing crosses on their clothes. And uh, they are probably believers. And they're coming your way. Maybe a patrol, hard to tell. All right. Uh, do, where can I get to that would get me indoors somewhere? Anywhere inside, you, any place on the street or into this building maybe. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a city, there's plenty of, you know, doors, there's plenty of places. Okay, uh, I'll, I, want, uh, I guess I'll go back into the building I was just in and try and okay. keep an eye out from there. Okay, so go ahead and give me a uh, reaction against a four to see if you do it quickly enough to avoid beginning a look at you. Partial. <laughs> so I'm going to get a roll, but it, with the partial, it's not going to be, it's going to be against a higher difficulty. And I get a two, a two, and a one. So I box. All right. It. Woo. <laughs> uh, so you can literally, by being in a doorway, and you watch, and then from above, Eric watches as they are apparently a perimeter guard. So you see them go around the building that's the building of concern to you. And once they've gone around the building, uh, they're no longer within line of sight of you. Okay. So they're actually keeping an eye out for this specific building. Yeah. Okay. Um, shit. That means there's something super important in there. All right. Uh, it certainly feels like it, especially considering that like available forces have been drawn for various, you know, engagements and they've been left here regardless. Okay. Uh, I'm going to continue back to that building. Okay. Do you want to, okay. I would assume you would have set up a signal to Eric if you wanted him to join you. Do you send that signal or do you continue on your own? Um. I'll bring him with me. Okay. I'll, I'll um, Eric, you see the mirror flash back, which means get the fuck down here. Okay. Uh, do you want a monkey man climb out the outside of the building? And yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> what was I reading Eric's mind? Yep. 
<laughs> it was literally my next sentence was I'm going to monkey man climb it. Awesome. Uh, I'm not going to require a roll. This is in the area of rolls or we don't know what's going to happen. I think we've established the dude that hangs on to like, you know, light poles with one foot and shoots a sniper rifle can get down the building pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, so the two of you uh, in short order, because you know that you now have a timer with this uh, watch going around the building. Uh, you end up going to one of the doors here. So the first thing you find out when you start looking for ways in is that it's not just the upper floors that are facade. Uh, this door is a full door. So your guess is the inside of the building is replaced with something. And in the process, the top was removed and will be rebuilt, which means there's probably something inside this shell of a building. This is not good. No, uh, I, I have a hard time guessing what would be in something this large, a missile, um, uh, a, 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 a mech maybe, a, a giant version of what we gave to um, Tank. Uh, the, the, I, I can't fathom it from, without getting a closer look. So you want to keep going and looking to see if there's an actual door or way in? I'll also, uh, while we're going, is, did they make it into the cathedral? Um, you have not, you don't have line of sight to them anymore. Okay. No, I yes. I'm asking Eric. Because he uh, was watching. I mean, I saw them, I saw them disappear. So I can only assume that they did. Okay. Well, they won't need you on Overwatch for now anyway. Uh, let's let's figure out what's going on here. Yep. So the third door uh, is still a fake door, but it's actually it conceals an actual practical door behind it. Uh, it's made of a weird metal-like material, almost plasteel-like. Uh, and do either of you have hack? Nope. Okay. So you would need to literally force your way in. Is there a lock? Can I shoot my way in? Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. So I, I think this particular scene will end with the, repeat, the loud repeat of a uh, high caliber sniper rifle. Kabang! Um, and then we will switch away uh, to inside the actual cathedral. So um, your group is uh, making your way. So this is all the uh, Project Morningstar people. Uh, you are making your way through this place uh, looking for the generator. So I'm going to need a five die. Actually, it's only four because it's side roll for Effie against a four. Four dice against a four. Yep, I'm successful thrice. So that means uh, you can get a pretty good guess of what direction to go. Uh, and you're turning a corner. And who is the first person who is leading this group physically? I, I think it'd be me just because I have like a giant ass machine gun. And if something happens, I can't shoot through my friends. Oh, yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You turn a corner and there is... A, an angel, literally an angel, wings and all. Um, what's different is apparently in more natural form, their faces are more elongated and pointed. They're very alien shaped. Mm -hmm. It suggests they either use some sort of light shape change or a device to appear wholly human. So it is angelic, it's a humanoid body, but the face is clearly alien. And it's working like on a panel on the wall and turns around like, Ur! and you think, because you can feel a wave of something that it's trying to use glamor on you. Uh, glamor for the in case none of you know, or someone watching doesn't know, is angels have effectively innate psychic abilities that they use to manipulate humans. Fortunately, the original reason for Project Morningstar is you're all immune to it. Yeah. So it, it doesn't go into defensive mode because it assumes 
oh, humans. I don't have to worry about humans. So how do you uh, reward his lack of caution? I so open up zipper, the zipper. Zipper. <laughs> <laughs> So give me six dice against a three, please. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, I better, I'll, I'll, I'll do that in character. <laughs> three. <laughs> three. Three scores. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be six dice against a three. This is just damages. So you just tell me how many scores. Okay. Uh, four. So this fucking thing is power four. So that's 16 damage. Okay. That's so, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a line of wounds open up. It looks really shocked and reflectively tries to put its face on. Yeah. So it goes with this very disturbing, like, stretchy face trying to look human and harmless um i think in this group the next person up would be k yeah yeah what do you want to do um well is the angel dead no <laughs> damn it oh oh no, they're pretty 16 uh, no they're pretty tough it's, it's yeah young. no i figured it wasn't enough <laughs> Well, what is what is? It also looks like a technician, not like a warrior. Blasted but... spooky changeling face right off, please. <laughs> what is what is Kay uh, carry? Like, what's her? You're good with your, you're best with your vibro dagger. Uh, you have some pistols, you have some knives, but like shank, shank, shank is your is your. Uh, okay, that's your ticket. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, yeah. What I would assume is while the angel is confused yeah. and dazed from getting shot, Kay would absolutely leap on them and take a shot at just wildly stabbing at their neck or wherever some... their most vulnerable part is. Can I get some action movie flippity flips? Jump off my back. It Jump off my back. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Kate, Kate crouches down and then leaps up, springboarding off of uh, oh, uh, <laughs> their back. Bell's expression, the camera pans back to D, who's running and is maybe even a little frustrated. The sisters are like as fast and murdery as she is. So the fact that she's not at the front has got to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is there like a little bit of a pickle face on D? Uh. no 100 okay. percent not i was literally just uh not in my body <laughs> oh i got you i got you all right so uh okay give me five dice uh against a three all right i can see this scene uh in the style of the the new of the marvel movies always using pop songs is uh michael jackson's you are not alone is playing and <laughs> oh my god fight is happening. <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh sorry you said i was rolling against a what now uh you really gets a three. Oh yes i definitely have two successes of a three and a five yes. so two scores is a full success uh which means you do full damage roll five dice and this is also against a three okay yeah, I got a six and two fives. So re-roll the six. Four. That's four. That's another 16. It had 32 hit points. So you literally mathematically, the two of you murder it. <laughs> so in the middle of it, it looks confused and tries to put on a human face. And you do, shank, 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 shank. And it falls down gurgling. And you, you hear it kind of whisper like i command you to stab 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 and and gates just like laughing gleefully the entire time she's just like stabbing at the neck like (laughs) (laughs) weevil's blood is red and i think we've pointed this out before it oxygenates differently so it ends up turning a strange more greenish color instead of going brown uh so it reacts differently to the atmosphere um (laughs) Why do I have a feeling that everybody, for different reasons, just begins to laugh and jump up and down? <laughs> I was about to, to say, 
the camera pans to D, who is only in the back screaming. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> Run to the angel and grab a feather out of its wing and dip it in the blood so that it has a cool little green V. Oh my God. And I stick it in my hair. Yikes. I run over to, to Kay uh, and uh, pick her up and spin her around. I'm like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> it's like the end of Death Proof. We only got one. <laughs> we only got one so far. You just all love it so much. <laughs> So uh, you continue on your way. Uh, no one's injured, obviously. Um, I'm not going to make you roll again because you already rolled a couple of times. So Effie's doing really well at guiding you. Um, and you end up opening uh, and the hallway opens. Uh, there's another door. You don't, we've determined you can open those doors. So you just keep rolling. So you can open the door. You, you warn them, you know, you, you gesture and then psh, the door opens. Uh, and um, Jay, you're looking into actually a chamber and there's some kind of technological equipment and there's an angel working at a console and it's a standing console. And it has a very like Donner Superman crystal control panel kind of a thing. And it's, it's working it almost like some kind of musical instrument. Uh, near oh. it is a hovering four foot chrome sphere. So do you open fire on the angel or the sphere or do you interact? What do you do, Jay? Uh, I look back at um, L. Yep. And just go. She makes a shooty gesture. Okay, I fire. <laughs> uh, okay, so go ahead and give me a six die shoot against a uh, three at this range. Uh, not, not hard. And you're shooting the angel, right? Yes, two scores. Okay, so go ahead and roll your six dice against the three again. Uh, four. Okay, so again, 16 hits. This gun's uh, good. <laughs> same reaction. Uh, it, it seems to be also another technician. So it's bloody and staggered and confused. Um, the difference here is, and where do I have, where the hell is K? Oh, the K's way up there, okay. I'm trying to get your initiative set here. I know the stats that are needed and cool. So the next thing that happens uh, is actually the spear. Um, Okay. Um, <laughs> there is a brilliant light that comes out of the sphere. It strikes Jay. It strikes Jay hard enough that Jay has taken three wounds. Wow. Woof. Is nearly down in terms of hit points. And it's clearly a disruptor of some kind because some of your outfit and like the strap for the gun are just disintegrated. Okay. Uh, so it is super bad news. Okay, right. uh, Kay, you're up. Oh, uh, so options are attack angel, attack sphere? Yes. Uh, uh, the other thing that might be something you would notice is uh, the angel is trying to use the, uh, the console like so, it you don't know if it's calling for help or something, but it's not it's just attempting. Okay, it's trying to do something. All right. Uh, well, I mean, I, I believe Kay knows what can happen if she destroys the angel. She doesn't know what will happen if she destroys the sphere. So yeah. Kay's going to go with the safe bet of <laughs> going berserker sauce on the angel. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and partially because I want this particular episode to resolve quickly. I, we've established that you were able to one, two, kill these. I'm going to just give you that a second time. So you come in and finish that technician. Uh, D, yeah. you now just have the sphere standing there, and J is like literally steaming. Okay. What do you do? Wait. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do medicine on Jay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a medicine test against a four. Um, it's in survival, which is a one, and then medicine's a two. Is that three, or do I just that's, two? that's three? Three. Okay, sorry. Yes, six. Okay, so um, you can help a little, but in battle, there's only so much you can do if you're not a medic. Uh, the other thing you notice is the wounds are getting worse. So that makes it, again, you're not really a tech, but it's almost like, you know, if something's microwaved, it doesn't stop heating up immediately. Mm -hmm. So you would see that Jay's skin is, as you're looking at it, getting redder yeah. and he's getting like burn sores. And you're not sure what the hell you'd do about that. Like whatever the weapon that is on the sphere, it's serious business. And Jay is seriously hurt. Effie, what do you do? Mike, what's Effie do? Um, um, what do I have to attack with? You, you've got a pistol or something, but it's not your jam, really. Um, you know how to use it, but you're not. I mean, some of the other sisters are really good at that. You're not. So I'm going to use my knowledge of electronics to destroy the console. Yeah. Okay. So you pick something out and uh, give me, whoa, given that it's alien, give me a science which is going to be four dice against a five. Ooh. Just find the off switch is in the back usually. Just... Oh, I got two. <laughs> okay. I got two successes. So here's the irony. Normally for console, you would use something like a taser and you'd overload the circuitry. In this case, you think it's a pretty good bet that it's optical. So you would take a high output flashlight and literally just shine an incredibly bright light down into the crystals. Okay. So your side tells you if it's optical like that, that will disrupt it. Okay. So you charge forward while, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever is going on and the angel is like dead at your feet and you, it looks ridiculous because you hold up the, it's one of those fatty flashlights with the big head. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, X-Files flashlight yeah, that has yeah. the, the really like giant throw. <laughs> and you, you put that on top of the thing, you light up and for sure that actually causes it to spark and go all disabled Star Trek panel. Sweet. And then it stops being lit. So it clearly goes dead. Uh, all right, M. Uh, you also have a pistol. You're not great with it, but you do have one. You have a lot of explosives. I mean, do I have, um, do I have uh, like, not demolition stuff, but like like flash grenades or a grenade or- well, You can have a grenade, sure. Um. If there's no one physically by it, you could try throwing a grenade at it. <laughs> doesn't seem that doesn't seem likely to um, meet with uh, <laughs> any kind of success. Um, there. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang and observe because I don't think I've got this is not my moment yet. So I think we'd see you pull the grenade out and look at it like, maybe, but no. <laughs> L is actually going to shoot the sphere, hits it, and the bullet literally pings off the thing. Oy. Then we go back to J. J, uh, you hurt like fuck, but you could fire the gun if you want to. Barrett? Sorry. Uh, you're up. You hurt like hell, but you could fire the gun of the sphere if you want to. Okay. So I'm laying on the floor. The strap's off, so I, I can only use my hand. So being on the floor is actually a good thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try and light up that sphere because it messed me up. I think we'd see you like holding the gun weird because yeah. of the injuries and you pull the trigger. So unfortunately, this is going to be six dice, but it's actually going to be against a four instead of a three. Right. It's harder. Um, Wait, since I was there uh, helping, can I help uh, stabilize the gun? Is that possible? Uh, yes, which will give him an extra die of attack. Okay, great. I help stabilize the gun. So I get to roll one more? Yep. Yes. She's helping you out. Well, that gives me six success. Or six scores. Oh, goody. <laughs> All right, so that's going to give you a little extra damage, even though normally 
Uh, no, actually, you have a thing that adds to that. So you're going to actually roll eight dice. Nice. Uh, and this is going to be against a five. Okay. Two. Two, but there's sixes, so that explodes, right? Yep. Only three scores on that. Okay. A lot of fours. Roll a lot of fours. <laughs> go up. Um, so when the sphere begins to glow again and you realize it's chosen to fire on you a second time, what would be your last words to D? Oh, no. Oh, let's see. Um, this really hurts. Thank you for trying to save me. So can I can we read in that you like push her off you? Yeah. Okay. So that ends up being like a little bit of Michael Bay shot because she goes rolling away as the 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 disruptor lance hits you. Uh, I'm actually going to reverse what I just had as an expedient for you. It shoots you again for the same amount. Unfortunately, because it's a blaster type weapon, it disrupts and disintegrates you. Oh man. So he goes all like type three phaser. Uh, the the gun hits the ground, but it, it all of his organic is disrupted and is destroyed. Is it gooey or just gone? No, it's uh, gone like powder. I would say the highest density stuff, like his heart, doesn't go completely away. Like the shit that's hard to burn away. So there'd be like a steaming heart in his clothes, which I go, I know I just made it worse, but I think that's, yeah, that's well, bad. but it's logically, yeah. I think what it would be. Okay. Uh, Kay, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've clearly established that the spear can't be destroyed. I can't, I don't, uh, what's well, left in the room? Can we keep going? <laughs> I, so to, to cover this, because Kay is very good at like uh, tactical battlefield stuff. Right. Uh, the pistol bounced off it. The minigun did not. It dinged oh. up. And okay. So either somebody could pick up the minigun or your vibro knife may be more or less effective than the guns were. Like sometimes those vibro knives go through certain things that guns don't. Right. That's why, that's why you use them. Right. Um, you, you don't know. Huh. Well, I think that K in a flurry of anger and fury so you let out with a, a howl? We'll probably let out with a, a huge, yeah! And then just launch themselves onto the sphere with their vibro knife and just can start. I, can I consider that howl a celebration of Wolf Newt? A celebration of what? It's, it's, I think it's pronounced Wolf Newt. I'll, I'll send you, it's, it's a holiday invented by this lovely child that a bunch of people celebrate. Which involves wolves and howling, and what? Uh, it's yeah, really yeah, fun. It's, it's so great. <laughs> well, that's cute. So you just howled. So I'm going to count that as a, a, a wolf on Nate celebration. Okay. So go ahead and make a stabby stabby against the spear. That's going to be a five die attack against a four, please. E. Okay. Oh, rock and roll. I got a six and a five and a five. So I got three hits and I'm going to reroll my six. And I got a, not a hit. So go ahead and roll a five die damage. This is against a five. This is a very bad, this is a very bad, very naughty sphere. Naughty, naughty zoot. Holy cracker! Three hits. 
And any sixes that you would reroll, or is that the extended? No. Okay, so it's another 12 points. So that's, again, you were synced up with uh, Jay. Jay also did 12 points. Uh, it is now yellow. So it, it can, it's like the predator moment, like it bleeds. I'm gonna say the, the equivalent of it bleeds is you see cracks on the mirrored finish. Um, and at this point, uh, D. So you're kind of laying where you were thrown, kind of looking at the steaming heart. You're the howl of K, and K shoves the vibro dagger into the thing and cracks it. What do you do? I run up behind her and uh, swiftly ask, may I borrow this? Uh, and uh, you want to my, cut the knife and shove it in again? Throw my full weight behind the vibro knife and brawl melee uh, assist can, it up through there if possible. Can we more gracefully say that you do a spin kick into the knife she's already inserted to make it go deeper? Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and do your brawl melee can we can we yeah so that's okay yeah uh, okay, hold on. Be, i have like eight dice to roll it's gonna be against a four hey okay, hold on two four six eight okay against four yep <laughs> Wait, four and above hits? Yeah, yep. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three, and four, a six. six. So uh, four and hits and a six, yeah. or one of those is a six. Six! And again? And a five! We're gonna do it there. I'm gonna need a reflex against a four to avoid taking damage, because it explodes. It exploded! Explosion! Bloody, bloody, bloody! Time to explode. And it's like so. Yeah. Roll a uh, react save. It's on uh, left hand side towards the middle. It's going to be against a four. I see it. Okay. You got it. You almost got this in time to be done with it. You good? <laughs> good. You Beautiful. So you roll back as the thing explodes. Uh, and I stand up and go zip, zap, zap. <laughs> and as the pieces hit the floor, uh, the lighting from the walls changes from uh, sort of like the moon, uh, kind of like that kind of a glow. It suddenly becomes a brighter blue and throbs. Uh, it definitely feels like an alert. Meanwhile, Let's go back to uh, Navad and Torque. Mm -hmm. uh, another two hours have passed. It's been four hours since you left Bastion. There have been no problems and no encounters. Uh, it's been strangely quiet. In fact, it is a beautiful day. At this point, up ahead, you see a fairly large group of what looks like raiders heading your way. Bunch of people on foot, a car, a couple of trucks, motorcycle. Mm. Uh, About 30 of them. On Torque the, not think this good? Do we know if this good, bad? They're not flying any banners or anything. Oh, okay. Do we mm. have to address? Can we just keep going? So at this point, uh, I'm going to hand out some Knights of Torg. Um uh, Mike, you are Aaron. Uh, Daniel, uh -huh. you are Teeny. And uh, Barrett, you are Scott, the Scottiest of the Scots. <laughs> also, in my mind, all look like Paul Norman, did, by the way. Aww. Like, if I was casting them, there's like Paul Norman Dins like everywhere. And only uh -huh. a few of them want to give you hugs, which is a heartbreak. That's pretty. Yeah, that's... How many of them want to play ultimate Frisbee with you? <laughs> Two of them. It's not as many as the Eric's. Uh, all right. So they, what do you do? Do you encounter them? Do you try to get the hell out of the way? Do you try to ambush? What do you want to do? They're not flying banners. I think 
possibly they are coming in some kind of peace. I don't know. Torg, what do you think? Well, Torg feel we let them pass if they want to pass. If they want to stop, they stop. We just see what happens. Torg does not think aggressive, so... So as you get closer, you notice they've got Curse's colors, but um... you do not see any of Curse's emblems. It's almost like the emblem part was torn off. <laughs> Banners on the you. flags. Bless you. Leaving only the colors. Uh... Hmm. Torque not good. sure if this deflector or not. Well, deflector, right? Defector. But defector. Torque, Torg not, Torg never, Torg always confused those words. I'm confused myself because if they've left the service of curse, that may mean that they do not want to fight the angels, in which case, they would be aligned against us. But at the same time, the members of Curse's party historically have been our enemy. And if they are defecting, then perhaps they're, we should ask them who they serve. <laughs> yes, let's talk to them. Okay, as you get closer, you see that a lot of them were wounded. You're seeing a lot of them are bandaged. And those that are wounded that are walking are like some of them are limping, some of them have slings. Like this looks like people that have been through the ringer. I mean, Torque still feels like if they want to talk to us, they talk to us. I say we wait to see what they want. Seeing you approach, uh, there's one uh, that's, that's in one of the trucks that slams on the top and makes the you know, bang, bang, bang sound. Uh, and the group stops. Uh, the truck comes forward slowly. Stops at about 100 feet and a dude in junk mail gets out. He has an eye patch that seems new. So you see blood on his face. You seem to be wounded as do all of your party. Yeah, we uh, ran into some trouble. Uh, are we going to have trouble from you, or can we just get out of here? I see you're wearing Curse's colors. Looks over at uh, Torg and the Knights. And why do your colors look so familiar to me? We Torque were... not sure, but Torque feel like if you not want trouble, we not want trouble, right, Navad? Oh, correct. We don't <laughs> want any trouble. We're just curious as to who caused such damage to you. Did I know those names? You're, you're from Bastion, right? Yes. Yeah, well, your deal with Curse is over. What? Well, he's fucking dead, man. Curse is dead? You could have told us they have warriors. There are seraphim in Dallas. Burning swords, armor, the whole nine. They ripped right through us. Curse had some pretty high-end cyberware. It cut him down. Are you fleeing the battle? Oh, that's not a battle. That's a massacre. I'll fight a battle, but I'm not going to sit around and get, wait to get killed. I'm not a coward. I'm just not an idiot. Where are you going? Where are you taking the remnants of your... You yeah, haven't decided, honestly. Um, away from there. We're not far enough away to make that call. Just want to make sure we're not going to be followed. I, some of the believers uh, pushed after us, but I don't think there's any after us right now. They're busy. Shit is going down in Dallas right now. What are the believers busy doing? 
defending. I mean, we were coordinating with that uh, Texas Defense, whatever the fuck it was. And, Texas uh, Defense Force, TDF. So that army with that, that maniac uh, tank boy or whatever the hell he was, they led right in like it was a frontal assault. And our job was to cause trouble. And we were down for that. And uh, we were told to guerrilla tactics and keep them off their, you know, keep them on one heel. And we did. But then the seraphim showed up and fuck that. So I don't, I don't know. But the believers, I think, are fighting tank and i think uh there was some mercenaries there it's it's hell there's explosions gunfire everywhere i never seen anything like it torque we should let them into bastion i th- well torque obviously agree yes really yes yes Tork feel like there are no other option. So without an insight roll, you can clearly tell that he is like off center by that. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Well, I guess we'll go there then. I, I mean, we can defend it if nothing else. That would be helpful. And like I said, we're I'm willing to fight. It's just that was not a battle anymore. You're still going in? You sure you don't want to turn around and go back to Bastion with us? Our friends are there. We need to go. At least to help extract and take people home. Okay. Okay. I respect, man. I This is not what I expected, and Okay, maybe it's not actually a bad thing that Curse is gone. What's your name? Anton. Anton. Tell the people of Bastion that Torg and I have allowed you to enter the city freely. Uh, I'm going to step in for one of the... uh... You know, I'd be more than happy to go with them. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's true, because you only need two people to carry you to Dallas. They, they wouldn't be hassled if one of the Knights of Targ was with them. Um, so, with, with, uh, Mike, which one are you playing? Tyron? Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Uh, okay, Aaron. Should we send Aaron there? Yeah. Torg feel like if Aaron wants to go, Aaron, go! I'll carry your message. And I'll bring them along. But we'll see uh, you soon. I hope. But thanks, Aaron. Um, I, I was a lieutenant. Uh, I guess I'm just some dude now, but a lot of these guys report to me. You know what? It's The world is a much better place and everybody's just some dude. He, he actually smiles. Yeah, I suppose it is. All right, let's go. And he does the circle up gesture and they all motivate. Uh, all right, meanwhile, back to uh, Eric and Goldwater. Um, so there's a, a crack of the gun, and I don't need you to roll to hit because you're Eric. Uh, you murdered the fuck out of that lock. Ah. And you're able to open the door. And you discover that the inside is basically hollow. And it's got a little bit of superstructure to support it because otherwise it wouldn't, like the walls wouldn't hold up. It needs to have a thing in it to keep them upright. Uh, and the other reason you now see that that top was the way it was is that it is a top that would open. So very reminiscent of a missile silo that's been built in an apartment building. But what's sitting there is a spaceship. So this is not one of the rockets that's been carrying plastic. Your guess is escape pod. I have never seen anything like this in my life. I don't think any human has seen this maybe outside of those redeemer believers outside. I mean, are they trying to 
Are they trying to go somewhere? At this point, the lights inside the building all go out and the spaceship begins to glow slightly and little lights start to light up in sequence along the side. And there's this hum that very much feels like it's starting up engines. Is there a door? Uh, there are what look to be potentially like hatches on the side of the thing and there are places to get up to where they are, but there's no obvious door. Do you want to get up to where the hatches are? Yeah. At a run? Yeah. Okay. At a monkey run. Are you uh, running also Goldwater or are you covering him? No, I'm going to. Okay. So you no, want to... Weirdly enough, uh, the, the two choices are either run back the way we came or get in or get into this thing because if it goes up and... Yeah. Like, I'll be vaporized if I stay down here. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I, I, I go. And I want to stop this thing from getting away, too. Okay. Um, I, I need um, Eric to roll one die, but he's going to get an extra die because he's got Goldwater helping him. Okay. So the two of you, uh, you're going to be rolling against a four, and partial success ain't going to cut it. Because I got two fives. Yes! <laughs> Somehow, you literally push on the panel or something, and you get it to open. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. I see. Let's go. So here's the problem. This is an exterior access panel to the equivalent of a Jeffrey's tube, and it is a big enough orifice for a goblin, but not a gold water. <laughs> All right, all right, stay here. I'll, I'll find a way to open it up. All right, and if you, if you, the priority is to stop this thing from getting off the ground. He, um, Eric pulls Karen out of his holster yeah. and throws it to Goldwater and says, your priority is to defend yourself. And at this point, entirely on cue, the doors, so there's the one on your side, but there's one on each side. There are four that were actual doors, all open, and believers start pouring in. So you we literally get the shot where you catch Karen and immediately turn around to use it. Nice. Use her. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to turn that while you start. Again, we hear the gun repeat as Eric disappears into the into the spaceship. Um, back to the sisters. Um, you kill another two angels. Yay! And, and end up <laughs> finding your way uh, down into what looks to be a generator room. And this is, uh, I, ironically, it's not Star, uh, um, what the hell is it? What's the parody of fucking Star, Galaxy Quest? Y you know, the I forget what they called it, but there was a big um, you know, alien energy like generator room in that ship. Mm -hmm. Um, so it looks like that. Like there is a big, you know, probably antimatter, matter, antimatter kind of generator thing, and a series of those control consoles. Uh, you are able to very easily take down the technicians here. Uh, but you're now looking at obviously what's powering this whole place. Well, that's something. This is crazy. Well, what are we all just waiting for? Are we just gonna, we're gonna destroy this or what, y'all? Are we gonna keep gawking or are we gonna do some murdering? I mean, it looks like a bigger version of that thing that killed our sister. So maybe we ought to give some thought to how to do it first. <laughs> Think call. away. Good call. Ellie. Yeah. Um, I mean, M has a fuck ton of explosives, but I don't know what blowing that thing up. I mean, that might be an awfully big explosion. Why don't we just shut it? Would it be better to like get into it and shut it down? I mean, if we have the technical skill, I mean, Effie, do you think you can manipulate those control panels? I don't even know how they work. Um, let me go and and try and read one of the control panels. Is, is are they the the crystal control panels? Yep. 
So I, I need, how many of them are there? Oh, it's a ring of them. And it's so again, think like the kind of control array you'd have like in a starship for Star Trek. Yeah. So there's dozens of controls. Guys, I'm going to need like a hundred flashlights. And also you're not sure how you would actually interact with this. It's possible they were using their glamour to interact with the crystals because when you see them working at them, they're just holding their hands over the panels like this. So there's no buttons to press. There's no knobs. I've never seen anything like this. I don't, I don't think we can shut it down. I think we have to destroy it. Well, look, we know my vibro knife works, so. I mean, we could try to control the, destroy the panels or do you want to blow the place? It's, it, it would take way too long to destroy all these panels. I, I don't think it's going to, plus if it has any sort of self-defense system, it's going to recognize pretty quickly that we're trying to do that. And there is a pop of energy and an angel appears. It's the first time you've seen basically a teleportation technology used. So it appears out of nowhere. Uh, and this is a seraphim. So there, the group has actually seen one of these conjure a flaming sword, but not in full regalia. You, you D actually bucked that fucker down before it could actually manifest all of its shit, but it was pretty damn fearsome. This one is wearing energy-based armor, carrying the sword, and looks like a badass. And it says, submit. Uh, I'm going to need everyone to make a willpower roll. You all have uh, four dice. Uh, D, you have whatever's on your sheet. And you're going to be rolling against a four. Uh, I got a partial success. I have a... Uh... Triple success! I have an uh, exemplary. I got four scores there, so. Three hits. M and K are fully aware. Everybody else is a little down. What did you get, D? I got it full for me. Three hits out of three. Beautiful. All right, so sounds like Effie is a little stunned, but is going to be able to recover. Unfortunately, L uh, just goes blank. L? So yeah, L, it works on her. Uh, so Effie's, but it does mean that D, K, and M can all act. So what are the three of you going to do? It's apparently planning on murdering you. Gotta blow up this panel of shit. Uh... So M, do you want to use your explosives or set them up? Can M... Can M go first and set up stuff if M wants to, and I take the first hit of- Yeah, if, if M's going to do that, you're going to have to hold off this fucker long enough. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. The charge. There'll be more than one action. Okay. But you and K can both fight. Is that the plan? Do the two of you kind of look at each other like it comes to this and then wait in? Only if M is good to explosive. Um, Shannon. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, was a little. They're, they're bit... asking you. Uh, so, D, do you actually say something like, or so you ask? And blow it up. Okay. Then, okay. I will. I I run and hit the fuck out of this uh angel. So actually, let's right there. Uh, I'm gonna do a like a three minute bio break. And then we're going to, we're right down to the end of all these scenes and the end of the episode. I'm going to see where all this goes. Okay. Uh, I want to see where it goes. <laughs> thanks for staying with us. Wait, and, wait, wait. Uh, Let me redact before we go. I say, M, zip them up. Uh, all right, right. You can cut that in for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, one last we left, we had, uh, Project Morningstar in the generator room of the Angels Cathedral. And a uh, seraphim had just shown up, had just manifested, somehow teleported in. And we we got, we were treated to um, D and K 
straight, straight, uh, striking a, a dirty pair anime combat pose uh, and doing the kind of grim nod to each other uh, and D yelling to M to blow the fucking thing up uh, and battle is engaged. So the first thing I'm going to need is uh, K. We've already determined that K is slightly faster than D. So K, uh, you're going to go first. You want to shank the angel? Uh, at least I need to take off my tour glasses. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kay, Kay wants to shank the shit out of that angel. So five dice against a four. Okay. No, one too many. Okay. <laughs> Three hits. That's, that's the two five. best place ever. That was like a uh, genre playground like <laughs> so good uh okay so it's three hits one six. Oh, beautiful i'm gonna re-roll my six yeah yeah <laughs> it explodes exploded it exploded again <sighs> no six but a four give me six dice against a four Hey, I got a six and two fives. And we roll the six. So that's going to be three scores. Nope. Okay, so that's going to be 12 points. Uh, and then D, you're up. Okay, here we go, baby. I'm going to go get some martial arts mayhem. Is that what's going yeah. on? Yeah. All right. I'm going to make a blood angel out of this angel. Roll melee against the four, please. Yeah. Oh, no, baby. Four sixes and two additional hits on top of that, buddy. Let's reroll these sixes and see what ha happened was. Ow. Two hits. So that's six altogether. So what, what's your normal damage for your martial arts attack that should be on your sheet? Your unarmed should have a, a number. Five. Okay. I'm going to up that to seven. So roll seven dice against a four. Shit, I think your power is a three. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like the equivalent of a gun. Right. Yeah. Her feet. And bullet will Oh, baby! Uh, three sixes, three fives. Let's reroll the sixes. You'd be a lot of fun in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, no shit, oh, right? Oh, baby! Another five, two sixes. Suck my dick about it! And two fours to close. Seven, I think that was like eight, wasn't it? All together? <laughs> I don't remember. I think I haven't felt this good since I was married the first time. Good Lord. Uh, All right. So uh, I think that's 24 points of damage. Yeah. When you do that, uh, literally the armor that it's wearing, you destroy it. So you actually overcome that extra armor that it was wearing. Yeah. Uh, and actually get through it and draw a bleeding line across its chest. He looks very angry. <laughs> um, he turns around and K attack first. So he is going to attack K. Uh-oh. With the flaming sword. Oh, no. Wait, did he already have the sword? Doesn't he have to manifest that? Doesn't that take a turn? No, he, he said when he came in that he had everything. Uh, and I rolled a six, so I rolled that. And oh, no. Another six. That's oh, enough. fuck, shit. That's enough. So what's your... Oh, I got it, sorry. Your defense against energy is that. There's three sixes. I love you so much. 
Um, what would Kay's last word be? Oh no! One one word. Oh no! Okay. No, that's me saying it. That's not Kay. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, Kay's last word would be uh, probably I I don't know. Last word is hard. I think of I think of like two words. Single word is is difficult. So do the two words and trail off in the middle of the second word. Oh, okay. Uh, suck it. <laughs> All right, and that will end in a gurgle because it cuts from the joint in the neck down to mid torso. Oh. So she kind of peels open and drops. Oh, wow. Uh, I need Effie to make a science check four dice against a four, please. Uh, can I puke first? Yes. I'm successful three times. I'm guessing that Effie probably wasn't looking right when that happened, which is just as well. Yeah. Because you're focused on this because you're trying to tell M where to put the damn bomb. Yeah. Uh, so that roll means you can figure out the right place. So as, as M's pulling the explosives out, you're like, there, right over there, there. So M, you're going to give me a four die roll against a four, please. You're doing pretty good so far. Fine. Shannon, you wrong? Uh, how many? Sorry. <laughs> four dice against a four. Got it. Uh, oh, four scores. Yeah. Excellent. You set the bomb. Uh, right. do you go ahead and attack the seraphim. Yeah. Oh my God, this thing. I am, I am truly. Do I have to say anything if I will? Uh, oh my God, hold on. My cat is like in my lap. Move. <laughs> uh, I lost the dice. I'm trying to find it. Um, if I, if I, uh, if I get. Do I have to say anything before I do some like cinematic crap, right? Don't I? Oh, you want to do a cinematic action? What do you want to Hell do? Hell the fuck yeah, I do. So what do you want to do? I want to do an actual blood eagle, but like on the e angel. Well, it probably occurs to you that that very dangerous sword he's carrying, you probably couldn't carry it because if he manifested it, but you could maybe make his arm go towards him. Commit the blood eagle on his fucking self. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely okay. doing that. So you jump up and like grab his arm and try to yes. make that all okay. Yes, yes, yes. I want it to be the most dramatic and ridiculous thing. Like he's he's absolutely trying to resist the alcohol of his sword and so you're it's self-driving to you're, his. You're rolling a bunch of dice, but it's against a five. And you've got to do two successes. If you get two successes, you, so you have to do three scores. You have to score an exceptional success. If you do, you get to do exactly what you wanted. That's the cinematic rule. Well, you better start my movie, Alfred Hitchcock, because the birds are coming in. <laughs> One six. Also. <laughs> Okay, so uh, two two other hits, and then one one uh, what is this? One six. Oh, I don't want one. You come within one score of pulling it off. So I'm going to say that you get the sword into him. He turns it off because it doesn't kill him. So you wounded him, and he reaches out to grab you, and he literally does the big angel grabbing you by the throat you know we've seen this in underworld and half a dozen other movies like holding you up and he's got a big gaping wound that you've caused so i'm saying your kick 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 right 
M. If you detonate this, you're likely to explode the generator. Yes. Do you set off the explosion? We have to do it. Yes. D, you look over, you see your sister, who you've only recently met, smile her weird, creepy smile and flip a switch. What do you say to the angel holding you? thing called when you just like whoop, like you go whoop, up shrug no when you get when you get like when you just like whoop, up to heaven ascend no <laughs> what the, it's like a it's not banishment but like it's like an instantaneous thing it's like scary oh you mean like like the the creepy Christian why yeah. revelations the rapture know, uplifted yes rapture. thank you yeah that's it got, thank it's just you. a whole group in about five minutes but we got there we that's got right. to, we got to rapture that's what we were looking for no, we're looking for rapture. listen there is a succinct way to do this I only have a couple words they might they are clearly my last so no, uh, uh I just I just look at him and smile and uh, say, enjoy your rapture. Nice. Meanwhile, we're going to cut uh, to Goldwater. Goldwater, mm. I need you to make six shoot rolls against a four. Six in a row, please. Who is a Okay, the first one is a three, and sixes only explode on damage, right? No, they explode on everything always. Well, I've been screwing myself this whole game. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't really failed anything. Um, all right, okay. back to the first mission. Three Let's scores. go back twenty months. Well, like is all we got we to re, we got to remaster the first yeah. two seasons. Oh three my God. On, I just forgot it was this time. Three, yeah. three scores on the first one. Okay, so that's going to be an exceptional success. Okay. Um, Two on the second. So that's a success. Partial on the third. Okay. So no failures. And uh, no successes on the last one. So you're rolling six. Six dice? No, six rolls. So that was okay. only four. Oh, I said that was four. Sorry. I forgot. So the fourth one's a failure, complete failure. Okay, so what's five? Well, the first four are literally all the possible successes in order. Right, I know. Uh, <laughs> this one is four scores. Okay, so back to exceptional. And um, two. Okay, and that's success. So this is you keeping the believers at bay and doing the shoot, reload, you know, yeah, holding, shooting the multiple position. I mean, this is always exciting in a computer game <laughs> to Ooh. turn around and get more than one direction. Yeah, uh, Resident Evil does that a lot. Um, you've got only one failure and one partial, but those mean that I get a shot at you. Okay. So the partial, I do hit you. Uh, you're going to get hit for twelve points. Woo! What's your willpower? Uh, four. Okay, so that's actually going to be uh, two wounds. How many hits do you have? Um, I have 22. Okay, so that takes you to 10, right? Okay, and then I get my attack uh, for the one that got the failure on. It also hits you. Uh, it does 12 points, which takes you to zero. Um, it's going to be two more wounds. Sorry, I... Uh, no, I, I got you. You're, I, okay. you're, you're zero you're, hits. You've taken four wounds all together. You need to make a very important toughness roll. All right, let me open up my character sheet again. <laughs> I think your toughness is five. 
So He's just go ahead and roll, roll five dice against a four for me. This is a, an important stake. <laughs> uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay. So the way this works is once you're at or below zero like that, you may have to make toughness rolls to stay fighting, stay awake, and not drop and not take you know a, crucial injuries and shit. Yeah. So you're at zero fighting. So you're literally panting, bleeding, but you're keeping the people at bay. Nice. Meanwhile, inside the ship, uh, Eric, you're climbing around looking for a way to maybe let Goldwater in here. Um, you come to a place where there's a porthole that's, it's not really a portal, but there's like kind of a window you can look through into a chamber inside the ship. And there's like six angels in there and they're laying back in grab beds with seat belts preparing for a flight so it's kind of like the opposite of the opening scene of alien okay where they're kind of laying back and like well this is going to be rough and it's clear that there are a bunch of aliens in here so it looks to you like they're leaving like the shit you did caused them to swipe left get to the escape pod and try to get out What can I see that's combustible? Well, you can't go through that panel, but you can see so you want to be in the Jeffrey's tube thing looking for something that might cause damage. Yeah. Give me four dice against a four. All four are successful. Okay. Uh, you find a lead that's kind of uh, it's sort of a reflection of what the other group was doing where it, you think that leads to something that would be a power source which might be the thing that would be mr blow up he caused damage like you don't think any of the cabling and shit in here would do anything right but you follow it through the access tube to try to get there <coughs> okay i'm gonna follow it okay so at this point um gold water the ship rumbles again and instead of there being exhaust at the bottom that would just Rocky Horror Picture Show your ass, mm -hmm. uh, it sparks all over the surface and then little bolts of uh, kind of static, it's not really lightning, kind of shoot out to the support structure around it. It becomes very charged and lifts up. As it does that, uh, make a willpower save against a five, please. Complete fail. Okay. You see the ceiling, the, the roof of the building open. And you, so it's almost like the frost building. Like we all hope it's, we hope there's an alien laser in there. Yeah. So it does this and the ship lifts up and away and you feel yourself falling back and you see as the ship containing your friend rises up and out of Dallas and you pass out. Meanwhile, in the ship, you follow the lead up, and on the way, you see a window going out, and you get to the shot of the city pulling away, mm -hmm. and you see the cathedral explode. So there is an explosion, and it's kind of a plasma blue, and it annihilates the cathedral of the angels. It is a crater. Do, does that stop you, or do you continue? No, that just makes me want to go more. Okay. And I recognize that my leg is starting to hurt. So uh, do you curse at all? Or do we just see shots of you wincing as you're crawling through the tube? I just kind of laugh and say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, and so I think the shot as you're crawling, we'd see your cross like fall out and like just be hanging there. And we get that shot where we can see it very clearly and the significance. Yeah, And you come into the connection to the generator, which is a mirror to the one in the cathedral, because the same technology, you don't know that, but for the players in the audience, like, well, that's clearly what it is, right? So it's pretty clear to you, the big hovering crystal thing with all the leads is the thing making the power. Okay. 
I have a revolver or like a pistol. Yeah. How big is it? Uh, it is about the size of the torso of a football player. All right. I'm going to empty my pistol. Okay. We will cut to the deck of the spaceship where uh, three command aliens, which are in this weird, like almost these biblical robe things, seem very pleased with themselves. And there's a crew working on the little crystal panels. Uh, and they uh, seem content that they have escaped and are going to be able to go home. And as they're about to congratulate themselves, there is a sudden flash of blue light. And back to Torg and Navad. Uh, Torg. The Torg is um, doing, doing the uh, taking care of Torg business. Uh, oh, right. Torg, Torg uh, the two of you with the two Knights of Torg are right at the edge of Dallas. Two things happen. One, you see a spaceship come up out of the city and start floating up overhead. Short, like moments after that, there is a huge explosion in the city and you see blue light, like, like a plasma explosion. And then almost like an echo, the spaceship explodes. Wow. Oh. Does that mean Torg and Fam win? I guess I don't know what just happened. It seems like that spacecraft exploded. Well, spacecraft is Angel, right? Uh, so Angel go boom. I think so. Yes. Angel that's, just go boom. Yes, that's good. But uh, about a half an hour later, <laughs> you're making your way into Dallas and you encounter <laughs> Grendel. Ah, uh, yes. Grendel and his army, uh, the, what's left of it, are jubilant. Uh, everyone's already a little drunk. Uh, and they, they flag you down. You made it. Torg here. We made the it. Torgasu revelry. Good. Well, the, the, that, that force you sent in, they, they took out the cathedral. It's gone. That must have been the explosion we saw. Oh, um, come, come over here. And he uh, drives you over and there's like a little medical vehicle. And in the back is uh, Goldwater. And he's bandaged up and <laughs> not looking great, but he is alive. Gold buddy, Torque, so happy to see Goldwater okay. I'll recover. That okay. You and Navad can recover together. Navad a little broken too. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Where's Eric? He was in the. He was in the spaceship. I think he's the reason that it blew up. We knew that we couldn't let that thing go, and I would have been in there with him. I just couldn't. I couldn't get in to the door. We got open. He had to do it himself. It was the right thing to do. One of uh, uh, Grendel's, uh, uh, I forget what her name is, but his uh, right-hand woman uh, comes in, sorry to disturb you, sir, and hands him a rifle, which he passes to you, Goldwater. It has uh, a ring mm -hmm. around it. It actually has a wedding ring on it. It's a very distinctive rifle. Uh, we, we found this uh, near you. We thought you might want it. Yes, I... Uh... I need to be the caretaker of that. It's my 
friend's wife. All right. Well, we're, uh, would you like a drink or we're celebrating? Yes, I think I would. And he passes you a flask. He gives to Eric and whoever else gave their lives to save Texan, maybe the world. So the Battle of Dallas was won. Uh, Dallas was freed of angelic control, uh, which then resulted in a series of wars by the warlords. But no more did they have to worry about the dominion of uh, otherworldly beings. And uh, the humans uh, and the new humans of the world could begin the long climb back to dominion of their own planet. Uh, it would later be said of this uh, by Goldwater that it was a good day, but a hard day. All right. Um, and that is the end of chapter two and the end of the road for most of these characters. Mm. Um, it may well be that uh, Navad will have to retire. Like magic has become very difficult for him, not impossible, but he did so much by saving Bastion and redirecting the Skyfire. Um, well, now he's just going to get into uh, magic tricks and, 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 <laughs> and practical magic. Close up magic. It's Close all up magic. It's As all card magic. Covered card. churros without fear. Sponge balls. Well, and ironically, I think you end up kind of where Gordon was, right? Mm. Because like being resident to Bastion and kind of being the mage there is like, that's within your ability. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like the posters would be different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's an implication, which I hope is not a problem for uh, Barrett, that uh, there's another bit of destiny waiting from, for uh, Delano. Um, there, there is someone special out there <laughs> for Delano, uh, a German woman. <laughs> Apparently, a woman who speaks <laughs> German. <laughs> Oh, right. I thought that that's what I was picking up on. So uh, thank you to everybody who has been watching. Uh, it's been great to have you along for this. Uh, those of some of these characters may come back, you know, in a few months where we have yet to decide there may be a chapter three, but we're not sure. Um, but this particular part of this story and this part of Texan uh, is come to an end and certainly what happened here will affect I've actually got a tabletop game running and this will affect the world uh, it will affect cool. fiction going forward so that's certainly an impact uh, Bastion exists in the world um, Chaz defends the place it is a relative <laughs> mage who <laughs> turned the head into a skull Chaz uh, <laughs> and uh, thanks to Mike and Shannon for inviting me uh, to, to write the crazy game and, and uh, bring everybody together. All righty. So we'll kick it back to you, right, Jen? Uh, yeah, I believe that's right. Um, hey, we want to thank everybody who has uh, been watching us for the past year and change. Uh, that was the season finale for season two. As Mike said, uh, we're going to take a bit of an indefinite hiatus. We're not sure when and uh, in what fashion we're going to be back exactly um but uh you know stay tuned there'll be stuff coming up um we would like to uh you know extend our thanks of course to all of the cast and crew mike barrett uh jen danielle uh, jessica caden hannah um everybody for being involved uh, mike neistel for um uh, uh, writing the game and putting it together uh colt our technical director uh sabrina um our chronicler and uh and everybody who's helped us out with the moderation uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, we thank you for being along for the ride. Um, until there is further news, we will see you in the wasteland. <laughs>